Good afternoon. I'm Michael Baker. I'm executive editor with the BTN Group. Uh, thanks for joining us back here for another hour of BTN TV. All right. Uh, first up today, I'm joined by Adam Kerr, who's the CEO of Tripism. Welcome, Adam. Thank you very much for having me. All right. Well, thank you. All right. So let's start uh, just for the uninitiated. Maybe uh, give us a quick uh, summary of what Tripism um, is. Yep, so Tripism is a platform for enterprise uh, uh, travel teams. So we enable travel engagement. So we uh, take all of the information from the travel team and all of their travel supplier partners. And then we uh, um, uh, tie it together with uh, feedback from their travelers and present it to the travelers so that they can quickly and easily plan their trips. And what's your typical customer? Are you working with larger companies uh, for the most part? Yeah, so typically our customers are the larger enterprise customers. So the ones with kind of sophisticated travel programs, uh, you know, typically 5,000 or more uh, employees. All right, excellent. Well, let's talk about some of the trends that you're seeing in the corporate travel industry. And I know one of the things we've talked about in the past is uh, this sort of information overload that uh, travel managers are facing. So you've got to tell us what you mean by that and, and how you can kind of help solve that. Yep. So. Um, I mean, travel programs have become really sophisticated. Um, so there's, you know, many new categories of information. So there's things like, you know, the hotel program, the office location, but now there's things like sustainability, traveler well-being, traveler safety, um, you know, COVID information, uh, visa information, um, and um, as well as these new categories of information, there's also the rate of change of this information needs to be updated. Um, so traditionally, you know, travel teams would put a PDF on the internet or they might use email communication, but now because the uh, information's changing so much more quickly and there's so many categories of it, it's difficult for travel teams to present that in a kind of coherent way. And therefore travelers are struggling to find that information and they end up, you know, emailing the travel team or they contact agents and it's a kind of a admin overhead to try and, you know, answer the question. So with Tripism, we completely remove that overhead. We bring it into our cloud-based platform. We manage all of the updates. We become a kind of single source of information and we present that information clearly and quickly for travelers. So it's a much better experience for the travelers, but also, you know, it's much easier for the travel team because they don't have to answer the questions. They don't have to deal with all of the, you know, uh, input from the, from the travelers and uh, we're taking care of all of that for them. Absolutely. And to make a confession myself, I've uh, we recently had to do some training and uh, it, it kind of required us to re read our own travel policy, which was on a PDF. And I have to admit, I, had, I don't know that I'd ever done it before. Yeah. <laughs> so to kind of have this dynamic um, uh, kind of platform, does, does this kind of engage the travelers more? So they're they're kind of more engaged with their policies. and are, are, So not only are you keeping up with the changes, but the travelers are going to be more engaged and likely to follow the policies. Yeah, uh, that absolutely. And also, I think by just presenting the information in a much kind of clearer um, way, it makes, um, you know, adhering to the travel policy just easy to do and automatic to do. So, you know, um, to make the right decisions is just is just simple rather than having to kind of go through and read that travel policy every time. All right, excellent. All right, uh, Tribism recently has uh, had a new relationship with DeNova. So could you tell us a little about uh, what that entails? Yep, so um, and, you know, as, a, as a platform, we use data to personalize it. So we talk about highly specific, relevant information. We don't want to overload your travelers and we don't want people having to kind of read lots of text to find information. So one of the things that we recently um, uh, released was a data-driven restaurant recommendation mm -hmm. platform. Um, so rather than having to rely on kind of, you know, things that are generic or designed for leisure travelers, this is focused very much on you as an organization. And what we did was we take the information, the expense information from a company and then we can use that data to find out how many times a restaurant's been visited by employees within your organization. And then we can do data-driven restaurant recommendations. So, you know, if you're traveling to Chicago um, and you're looking for a restaurant, we can show you the top 10 most frequented restaurants in that location um, by your colleagues and coworkers. And it's, it's a really great way of finding restaurants because, you know, you're benefiting from local knowledge of employees that have been there and travelers that have been there and done some research in the past. Um, so you find, you know, fits within your expense policy, fits within your company culture. It's going to be convenient to your, you know, office office locations or your customers' offices. So, yeah, it's really cool. It's, just, it's kind of your own internal Yelp that, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that you can have. To, and, and that's really kind of an untapped area that, that uh, there's not a lot of information around dining and it's kind of overlooked and you, you kind of have policies that say don't spend you can spend this or that but it, in terms of it's, it's not something that a lot of companies have been able to capture in, in terms yeah, of I mean, management around it 
there's two points really. I think, you know, typically business travel, it, it's a sort of unconnected, there's lots of kind of silos of information and data and knowledge, um, but it's never really been connected before. So Tripism can bring together data from different aspects, either from your expenses or from the travel team or from your travel suppliers. And then we can combine it together to make a much better environment, a much better experience for the travelers to inform decisions. Um, we do this also with um, uh, you know, uh, information for the travel suppliers. Um, so you know, we get all this input about um, what people are looking at within the platform. We get reviews and ratings from travelers too. Um, and then we combine that together to provide it to the travel buyers. So they have like really super rich information so that they can then build a strong relationship to their travel suppliers, you know, whether that be in their QBRs or whether that be in their uh, negotiations that they do. All right, excellent. So you're on the ground as far as uh, working with companies and their policies. So what, what are some of the trends you're seeing in, in, in terms of policies right now? Or what, what, what are some of the the key trend lines that you're seeing? I think it's, you know, it's a super changing environment. Mm -hmm. So it's it's changing a lot for uh, travel teams and it's also changing for the travelers. So they need to be aware of, you know, things happening in different locations or different policies or things. So, and therefore there's never been a more important time to engage with your travelers. So a lot of people changing their HR policies or their approach to travel and where people work. And therefore, you know, their travelers, you know, need to be able to find that information and you know, at the same time, some of the TMCs have had issues staffing up. I think that's in a better position than it was before. Travel teams maybe don't have the budgets that they used to do, and therefore they need to be super efficient, super clear with their communications. And if travelers are confused and they can't find things, then they just give up and then they, you know, ring up the travel team or they email right. the travel team or the travel agent. Um, and that causes, in, in itself, causes more problems. So. Um, you know, through the platform, we can simplify that so people get the right information. So that, I think that's the biggest thing that we're seeing is, is change. The other piece is, you know, for a lot of travel teams, their travel spend has been reduced. So, you know, even after COVID and because of economic reasons, some of those companies have lowered their travel spend. And therefore, you know, there are changes happening within the travel industry with the, you know, NDC and the airlines and so on. And therefore it's a super important time for travel teams to, build a really strong relationship with their travel suppliers. And again, Tripism can help with that. We provide the data and the information to enable them to be able to do that. Absolutely. And it, it, not just the budgetary concerns, we also have the, the uh, sustainability concerns. Is, is, is that another factor you're seeing um, affect? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, a lot of, so, so we see different things with different customers. So some travel programs are really quite mature and sophisticated with their sustainability um, already. Some of the people are just kind of starting out on their sustainability journey and they're looking for best practices. I think the key piece is to be able to, to you know, communicate information to the travelers to enable them to be able to make informed decisions. Uh, you know, initially there was kind of, you know, I'd say more marketing information about sustainability whereas now there's increasingly more data to help travelers make those better choices some of the travel programs you know they've gone beyond just kind of you know um, talking about sustainability to now mandating things so ensuring that people are using train journeys for trips under three hours rather than flying uh, you know there's some real kind of ad advances in that area great well let's talk a bit about your roadmap are there any particular areas of of a focus or, or product that you're looking at going forward? Yeah, there's a couple of things really. So one is, um, um, you know, making the experience for travelers to find that information even better. So, um, you know, for many of our companies, we're completely replacing their travel and in some cases expense intranets. So therefore, you know, we wanted the discovery of that information. You know, if I'm looking for my, you know, what do I do if I'm missing a receipt or how do I apply for a corporate credit card? Any of that information, we want to make it super easy for people to be able to find that information within our platform. And therefore, you know, we're looking at more sophisticated search tools, um, you know, and potentially on a journey towards using things like ChatGPT to make it more conversational and engage with those travelers. So that's one area. The second piece is, this idea about data, we think there's a real kind of lack of meaningful data for travel teams. You know, travel is a huge investment for organizations and therefore we want to um, take advantage of some of the interactions within our platform, the feedback that we get from travelers to really kind of um, superpower the decisions mm -hmm. that travel teams are making and for them to be able to make decisions about suppliers and about what travelers need um, and about the way that they work with their different suppliers. So those are the kind of two areas that we're focusing on at the moment. All right. And how has customer growth been? It's been super good. Like, so we've seen, you know, tremendous growth. Um, 
I think, you know, there's a sort of pain threshold that travel teams have reached now about kind of updating that information themselves within their own, you know, old intranets. Um, so we're seeing both, you know, a big uptake in terms of new customers and then the customers that we've got, you know, our growth has been huge. So I think since January last year, we've seen about a 500% growth in activities and we're signing like a, a new corporate client one a month. So, so things are going really well. Absolutely. And it's, it's not just the, the information overload we talked about, but also that a lot of them are kind of, they have their own teams are leaner now as, as, as we we still come are coming out of the pandemic. They're they're dealing with leaner teams. So, is, is that something you're seeing as well? That it's it, they're not only being tasked with more, but there's fewer of them to be handling those problems. Yeah, yeah. for some of the organisations that we work with, you, you know, you, you're absolutely right. Um, and you know, I think the role of the travel team has become broader. You know, if you think back, back ten years, it was very much around kind of managing those supplier relationships and being part of procurement and driving those contracts. Whereas now, the role is you know much wider about mm -hmm. kind of you know traveler safety and traveler well-being as well as all the things that they used to do and then like i say you know the ability to be able to communicate that you know companies have really amazing travel programs these days they're so sophisticated they provide so much value to the to the traveler it's really how do you communicate it how do you make sure those travelers are getting the best value from this fantastic program that, that you've got so that's one of the kind of you know key things that we look to do um, you know, um, there are really great benefits. There are really great kind of promotions that people, you know, have. So ensuring that they can access those. I think one of the kind of key differentiators that people are looking for when they sign up for a new organization is, you know, how good's their travel program. Um, and I think, you know, it's uh, one, of the, one of the kind of key assets a an organization has. All right. So are, is Tripism global or uh, are there key markets that are stronger for you than others? Yep, so we have um, uh, uh, companies launch with us all around the world. Um, so I'd say all of the customers that we work with, we work with them globally. Um, predominantly, the customers that we have are either US based or European based. But uh, like I say, you know, the, the platforms used uh, globally. And we're probably bringing on about an extra 10 to 15,000 new user accounts per month. Mm -hmm. So it's like really kind of tremendous. One of the things that we saw when there was a return to travel, that the usage within tripism was higher than people booking travel. Mm -hmm. So companies use it as a kind of, you know, a leading indicator to show about what travelers were doing and about their thoughts returning to travel. You know, travelers absolutely love tripism. You know, it's super easy for them to find the information. I think the fact that we, you know, bring together all of the benefits and promotions that they have in a single place, you know, whether that's for corporate travel or also sometimes for leisure travel, um, you know, is super valuable. So we see like, you know, massive usage within uh, within the platform. All right. And what's your thoughts of where we are in the recovery right now? I, mean, I think we saw a lot of uh, uh, less round of earnings. We saw a lot of uh, indicates that volumes are kind of at 75% and that's kind of where they're going to stay. Do you think that's that it's kind of that's kind of our real uh, new reality now and maybe it's time to stop from making comparisons to 2019 and <laughs> see where we are now. Yeah, it's super I mean, you know, so we have like really good visibility of, of usage within the platform. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can kind of you get a, a sense of the um, uh, uh, the trends within within the industry both in terms of kind of what's coming because like I say some people use tripism in, 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 in advance so you know obviously we saw huge growth our actual kind of um, uh, we saw a really big spike kind of um, August September last year then we've seen um, a plateau or kind of even a kind of slight drop um, in the last month again we're now above where we were August last year so I think you know some of the companies are coming into new budgetary cycles um so we'll see over the next few months whether travel begins to increase you know like i say a lot of it's around economic uncertainty i think um some of the companies in the same way that they used to see marketing as a cost that they could you know temporarily reduce i think some organizations now after covid because the businesses survived with very little business travel some organizations see that travel is also a kind of lever that they can use to uh, reduce operational costs from time to time but i think you know the feedback that we see from the travelers and from those organizations is that they you know they su suffer from that it's it's something that they need to do they need to attend those conferences they need to go on those sales visits and so on so you know, my, my view is it's going to continue to grow through uh, the rest of this year. Excellent. So how important do you think travel policy and, and kind of having a good travel experience is in, in terms of being able to recruit and retain talent? I mean, we've, we've heard discussions over the years that that is important, and but it, it seems like there is kind of evidence emerging now that, that it is a decision when you're deciding if you're going to work with the company or not. 
people do look at travel policies. So, so what, what's your own thoughts on this? I think, you know, absolutely. I think, um, I mean, some of the financial organizations, they benchmark their programs against one another because part of the reason for that is that they know it's a really important part of their recruitment and they need to be competitive in that super competitive environment to get the very best talent. I think, um, you know, there's a high expectation for people to be able to, you know, to be able to travel. If, if you're an organization and you don't allow travel, then I think it's going to, you know, hinder your ability to be able to do it. I think one of the great things that travel teams do is one, they have a really great program, but also because of those strong relationships with the suppliers, they enable benefits for travelers that they can use in their own kind of, you know, personal trips and leisure trips. And I think that again is a kind of key value that a travel organization uh, can bring. Um, so my, my personal view is I think it's, you know, a, a real asset. I think travel teams, you know, um, they're many times they're kind of unsung heroes. They're providing much wider you know, uh, value across an organization, both in terms of recruitment, employee satisfaction. You know, there were some data points, you know, a number of years ago um, about how important that is. But I think that's something that, you know, uh, the industry needs to kind of continually beat that drum and, and travel teams need to, you know, recognize that, uh, uh, that important role that they play within the organizations. I said, you, you mentioned kind of the blending of, of business and leisure traveler. Is that something you're seeing addressed in, in policies more? Are, are companies kind of looking at you know, putting guidelines in place for employees who want to kind of turn a business trip into a leisure experience. It's a super well. difficult area, I think, for organizations. I think, um, you know, what do they do about that? I think for most travel teams, they're happy to enable the benefits or promotions so people can, you know, receive discount if they book directly with that supplier for their personal use. Uh, but I don't think, you know, where does the organization's uh, responsibilities lie? You know, mm. do they have to kind of support that traveler? Do they... Um, you know, uh, uh, you know, how far do they go within that? And I think for most travel teams, you know, you can't use the corporate booking tool. You obviously expense it on your own corporate credit card. You're responsible for, you know, your own travel plans and so on. But I think it's something that, you know, companies will have to address, uh, you know, increasingly and, and be kind of crystal clear about it. I know a lot of the travel teams that we speak with, they get, you know, a lot of inquiries about, you know, personal promotions or, you know, personal travel and so on. So it's probably again it's around communication you know this is these are the these are the rules if you're going to do this then this is where you go and this is how you manage it yourself do you think this is going to be a long-term trend is this you know still the result of people recouped up for a couple of years and now they want to take every advantage they can or is this really going to be kind of a new reality for uh, i think it's like, a long i think it's a long-term trend you know, you know you um you see the, the kind of data points about it like i say um the, the employees, um, you know, they really see it as a benefit. Like we can see within the platform, the popularity of some of those leisure benefits and leisure promotions and so on. So we know it's, you know, by the amount of traffic and the feedback that we get about them, that, you know, employees are using them. It's super value for, for, for them as a, as a, I'm an employee for company X and therefore I get this fantastic, you know, benefit or discount. Um, um, and I think it's something that will kind of, you know, continue, continue to continue to roll forward. I see. And, and what about just kind of the uh, um, the hybrid working uh, environment? Has that uh, caused any significant changes in policies? You know, again, I mean, it's again, it's difficult for travel teams. So mm -hmm. if you know, if you if you you know, you got a trip to Chicago mm -hmm. and you're there for three days, and then you want to add two more days to that trip. Uh, you know, how, do, how does that happen? And, you know, again, it's down for, you know, each company to make up their own mind. Um, but again, they need to be clear with the traveler. Otherwise it's going to generate more questions back to the travel team. Right. Um, um, but I think for most of them, you know, they want them to be able to um, take advantage of it. But at the same time, you know, obviously has to be done through your own personal expense and that you're responsible for any changes and you book it yourself and so on. So the travel teams, you know, it's not part of the service that they really offer to that travel team. All right. It, it's kind of interesting to see the, the involvement we've seen when I first joined this industry about 17 years ago, it, it was, everything was kind of moving to the procurement side of things. And now we see, you know, kind of travel being kind of more of an HR function or, or, or such. So, so it, it's been interesting to kind of watch this, this whole uh, involvement and uh, our, are, are you seeing that reflected in policy as well? Is it, you know, are, are, is it kind of less about cost and more kind of about wellness and, and, and those sorts of uh, Yeah, I mean, it, 
it ver- it varies by organization i think for a lot a lot of travel teams you know still an absolute core function is their ability to be able to work with those travel suppliers to help the travel star- supplier communicate their great product and ensure that the travelers are taking full advantage of it that they have the right information to be able to manage those supplier relationships so that's still you know an absolute bedrock of what they do but i think you know especially over the last you know four or five years that wider role of the travel team to play an important part in employee satisfaction um to um you know to look after traveler safety to uh, um you know enable um employee satisfaction you know that there's again there's been multiple data points about you know, if I have a really difficult, uh, you know, a difficult trip and it's, you know, arduous and my travel plans fallen apart, then it can really impact my employee satisfaction, my ability to be able to do my job on my return. If I have a really good experience whilst I'm away, you know, potentially, you know, do my work, do some things in the evenings, then, um, you know, it, it makes me a happier employee. It makes my whole experience much better and, you know, what travel is all about. So, um, but yeah, absolutely. I think travel teams now play a hugely important role and I think their, their role is, is, is much wider. And like you say, for many of those travel teams now, they're now either working with or, or um, as part of an, an HR team rather than just kind of siloed in uh, finance or procurement. All right. Well, thank you so much, Adam. This has all been very, uh, very interesting and to, to, to follow these trends. And thanks for, uh, for joining us today. Brilliant. Thank you very All much. All right. Thank you. And once again, I'm uh, Michael Baker. I'm the executive editor of BTN. Thanks for joining us. And we'll be back with more interviews soon for BTN TV.